This video has got a total of 2.6 million views and was one of our first ever epoxy projects we posted on our channel. This week I'm going to give this video a quick breakdown and show you guys how we done things way back in the past in how we're doing things now currently in our journey of building epoxy tables on a daily basis. I'm going to give you guys a breakdown through this video and show you guys the old ways in connection with the new ways. So if you are a DIYer or a hobbyist, a beginner woodworker, or you're planning to start a company building epoxy tables, this video is definitely for you and it's going to help you in your journey in building better epoxy tables. I'm going to show you all the mistakes I made way back in the past and I'm going to show you how we're doing things today successfully. And remember, we will always continuously seeking new ways and new methods every day to build better tables. I've got a slogan in my shop saying, today we will build the best physical possible table we can. Tomorrow we're going to build it better. And I think we should stand by that. I'm also going to go through all the tools we use in each step and show you guys exactly how to use them. This is quite a critical step, especially if you want to invest in the correct tools in building furniture pieces. So starting off this week's project, I'm going to give you guys a breakdown and boy, this took me way back at the start. And this was one of our first shops we ever worked out of. Uh, it was a small little shop. I think it was a total of 60 to 70 uh, square meters. And it wasn't a big shop, but it was a start for our woodworking journey. And we're starting this week's project off. And we are basically building a router sled. And I actually do have to say that this was our first router sled we ever built. And I technically designed and engineered this thing the way I think was going to work best for us. Because we obviously want to build this so it can last for all our tables. And I'll give you guys uh, my thoughts at the end of this process. Um, this actually did work perfectly. It wasn't 100%. I would say this whole engineering router sled worked out to... I would say 95% accuracy. Um, if I could go back, I will definitely not have done this step if I knew what I uh, have known now. But, you know, it was the start of our journey. So we had to go through all the steps to see uh, what was going to work for us now. So currently in our journey now, the way we do things... Uh, we've got a supplier that's got a huge CNC machine and you'll see there'll be a small pop-up screen coming up now to how we do things currently now in our woodworking journey. So we've got the supplier, it's about 30 minutes drive from our shop and we just take all our raw slabs to him and our tables when they are completely done to surface them for us because the CNC machine first of all is super fast. And it's 100% accurate. There's literally no room for any mistakes. And the third thing is it saves us a ton of time. By doing it manually with the router sled, it takes us literally almost the whole day to flatten our slab. And it makes so much mess. There's just so much dust particles over our complete shop. It's just a total mess. So we stopped doing this with a manual router sled well first of all it saves us a ton of money second of all it saves us a ton of time it it's literally faster for us to load our slab on my bucky take it to our supplier flatten it us for us both sides and taking it back to the shop than what i would have done it with a manual router sled with a manual router sled by going through all that steps i think i would still be busy only with the top side Anyway, this was our first attempt in flattening our slab. Like I said, it's about 95% accurate. The big problem is that you'll see the rail that's running across the, route, the, the slab. There's not too much weight on top of it. So it means it just moves up and down. 
and we actually did have a ton of comments pointing this out and i actually did go back to watch the video to see where the mistake was and the problem is the rail where the router is on is too light so the router bit basically is not running it's not cutting through the wood it's just basically some places it's running on top of the wood instead of cutting through the wood so that was the one mistake um, but if i look back the method actually worked for us and i know there's a lot of people that obviously don't know suppliers that's got cnc machines but the way we done it after the slab when i thought to myself this method takes way too long and it just makes so much mess around the shop what i've actually done is i actually went on to facebook and i joined most of our local woodworking groups and i started asking the questions there in you know who's got a cnc machine that can flatten slabs for us on an hourly rate or on a square meter rate and you know there was a ton of people that actually offered their services and i would recommend this for you guys in if you want to start because most of you obviously you can't afford to build a manual router sled so go this route ask your local woodworking groups in who's got a router a cnc router that can help you guys um, doing this on an hourly rate and i can promise you guys there will definitely pop up people that's going to offer their services to you moving to the next step and that's by cutting our slab in half and if i look back boy i was such a rookie <laughs> i can only laugh at this step um, we used a, a white melamin sheet for this step to mark the line we want to cut and this was ov obviously going to be the guide for our machine as well and if i look back if the machine comes to the middle part of this cut obviously the white melamine is going to bend slightly obviously this is not a very big important step because we are going to cast the epoxy and we are going to cut our slab down to its final size later on but if i look back i would rather use a steel for a guide because obviously where we are currently now in our journey we obviously did invest in better equipment to help us to build better tools and this is also a comment we get from a lot of people on our channel is saying that yeah look at this guy doing diy projects with all this fancy industrial face tool tools and i do want to tell you guys that before i started youtube i started doing epoxy projects and diy projects out of my garage with limited tools i didn't have everything my heart desired and you know i had to take my projects to certain suppliers to help us to get where we are today so i do want to encourage you guys keep on dreaming because you are gonna have your dream workshop you are gonna invest in better tools and you're gonna see once you're starting building better projects long term eventually you're gonna start investing in better tools better sanders better cutting machines and this is what i want to encourage you guys in keep on dreaming because go and look at all our newer videos you'll see we've got a bigger shop we've got better tools we've got better equipment we're building better furniture and that's what i want to encourage you guys keep on dreaming so as you can see i'm currently busy removing all the bark and softwood and nothing changed as is this is still super crucial in any epoxy table build in to remove all the bark and softwood this is a must in all the projects and this is also a question we get so much on all our videos we post on youtube is why do you have to remove the bark well the bark isn't fastened to the slab and if you're going to cast your epoxy the bark can be removed easily so just remove the bark and we are still using the same methods and techniques to today in removing all the bark we will typically start with a big hammer and a chisel we will remove all the bigger pieces of bark and softwood then we will come with our baby grinder and a wire brush in removing most basically all 
the softer pieces of bark that's on your slab and we also did invest in smaller bits of wire brushes to get into all that smaller holes and cracks where our grinder can't get in so still to today we're using the same methods same techniques in removing all the bark and softwood it's quite critical don't skip the step and yeah just remove all your bark the next step in our build is to build a mold for our epoxy table it's basically building a dam with walls where you put your slab in the middle so once you're going to cast your epoxy it's not going to leak out this is super crucial we're still using the same methods same techniques still to to date after a few years exactly the same methods although i do want to say that quite a crucial part in this step is always make sure the side walls i'm doing now to make them slightly higher than your slab because if it's basically going to be flush with your slab you're going to have issues once you're going to cast because if you're going to cast too much epoxy it's going to leak over we're still using white melamine still using wood glue and we are fastening our side panels with nails you can use screws but we found using nails is a better method for us another tip i want to share with you guys and we're still using it to to date is when you're building your mold always make sure to build your mold slightly bigger lengthwise and widthwise this is going to help you once your table is done that you can cut it down to your final measurements later on this is super crucial because if you're going to build your mold exactly the size you want your table you're going to end up building a smaller table that you have planned for another tip i want to share with you guys you see the steel table it's quite wobbly and we actually did invest in two massive steel tables that all four steel bases that's going down can be adjusted with a threaded rod every single time we're going to cast the table um, if i look back i can actually remember that the table was we did struggle with it slightly um, especially when it came to the thickness and the depth of the epoxy you can actually see that one side of the table was a little bit thicker than the other side uh, but like i mentioned the way we're doing it now is we've got a massive steel table that can be adjusted all four legs to make sure that once we're going to cast it's absolutely level so the next step in our project and this is something we are still doing the same methods to to date is once your mold has been finished building you do want to make sure that you seal the inside corners of your mold with silicon and you do want to clean it up afterwards and make sure you squeeze the silicon into the corner of your mold then you want to clean the silicon off and once you cleanse your silicon in the corners of your mold you want to leave it for around about 30 minutes to one hour to make sure it's completely dry this is a super crucial step if you are not going to apply silicon the epoxy is going to leak out still to to date the next step is by applying a wax into your mold now the wax basically prevents the epoxy from sticking to your mold and the white melamine is basically preventing the epoxy from penetrating into the wood so this is quite crucial and we're still using the same product it's called ram wax and i actually do have to say that over the last couple of years we actually had only one incident where we did not apply enough wax and the epoxy did stuck to your mold and you do not want that because it's an absolute nightmare the next step in our project is by placing our slab into our mold we're still using the same methods the only thing we are doing differently now is we are actually using a cloth to wipe our wood on all the sides because there are still some small dust particles you do want to clean and the way we done it back then is we will only use our air hose in cleaning all the small little cracks and holes and pockets with air dust um, this is quite crucial we're still using the same methods and you'll see i'm going to clamp my pieces of wood down we are still using the same technique here um, this is quite crucial because wood will obviously float if it comes in contact with any liquid so 
just imagine if you throw a log into a river it's not going to sink it's going to float so you want to make sure that your pieces of wood stays exactly in place always and and you do want to make sure that the beams you're going to apply is slightly higher than what your table is and always make sure once you're planning to cast your epoxy to do a last bit of cleaning with your air hose so calculating epoxy we are still using the same methods to to date and calculating epoxy is a calculation of length times width times height now what makes it quite challenging is the slab obviously is not straight and if you guys want to learn more on this topic you can just go onto our channel you can scroll through the videos and you'll see there's a video that's going into detail to how calculating epoxy i do have to say that we did get more accurate over time because you're starting to learn more on the curves of the epoxy the live edges exactly how to measure so this is something you will definitely get better at um, but yeah to, to date we're still using exactly the same method uh, whatsoever so mixing your epoxy this was one of the old methods we used um, we will add our color pigment into our part a resin then we will mix everything together we will hump the epoxy and while you're busy checking me hump the epoxy and you enjoy the video so far make sure by helping us grow we are planning to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year i think we're standing on 70,000 something now it's a huge goal for us you will definitely help us by supporting us by hitting the like button subscribe to the channel and hitting the notification button so you don't miss out on any future projects we're posting back to the video this was our old methods the epoxy we're using is not a deep casting epoxy but by mixing the color pigments into your batch a it's going to help you in giving you exactly the same color consistency every single time you're going to cast your epoxy but the problem is there will always be a little bit of epoxy left so we stopped using this method the way we're doing it now is we will mix our part a and our part b together in one bucket then we will add our color pigments into that we will make sure if we're going to add six drops of blue that we're going to add exactly the same drops every single time we're going to cast our epoxy so it's obviously super difficult for us to go into detail in every single little step in building a epoxy table successfully i want to share with you guys we designed a online epoxy masterclass going into detail all our methods and techniques the tools you need going into detail on how we build our epoxy tables it's a three hour course it's available on our website i am going to leave a link down in the description and i'm going to show you guys a small little clip of what you guys can expect in this epoxy masterclass this will definitely help you to build the perfect epoxy table we've been building epoxy tables for many years now and we are finally going to share all our methods and techniques with you my name is greg and i am going to show you how to build the perfect epoxy table I'm going to show you all the tools you need, exactly how to use them, and show you some tips and tricks down the line. Everyone thinks you need to cast your second layer of epoxy once your first layer has set. That's not true. You need to cast your second layer of epoxy once your first layer has become tacky. This masterclass has been designed for all woodworkers, from your beginner all the way up to your experts. Click on this video or in the description down below for more information. So there you go guys this course is definitely going to help you to build epoxy tables successfully the first time it's going to show you all the mistakes i made in the past 
it's going to show you how we build epoxy tables to today so go and check it out the prices are going to go up soon we are busy with a new website once that goes live the costs are going to double in price so make sure you head out to go and check it out before the prices are going to get more expensive so another tip i want to share with you guys in how we done things previously to how we do things now we obviously did invest in a better epoxy this was not a deep casting epoxy and the epoxy we're using now is deep casting epoxy meaning we've got more working time and meaning the epoxy takes longer to cure over time so we got about 24 hours and that means it's going to help us to reduce air bubbles because it takes longer to set over time the epoxy we are using here we cast in layers but it's it's not a quick set epoxy but it takes like four to six hours to become hard so it means that we can do two to three castings per day now the epoxy we are using now we can only cast once every 26 to 36 hours we can cast our epoxy so another tip i want to share with you guys in casting between layers and this is something we taught ourselves quite recently i think the last eight months we've been using the new technique and that is when you need to cast your next layer of epoxy now the way we've done it before is we will cast a layer of epoxy which is around about 10 to 15 mil thick we will wait for that epoxy to set fully then we will sand our epoxy to give it a scuff up so when we're going to cast the next layer of epoxy that is going to bond to our first layer of epoxy but we stopped using that method first of all it makes a lot of dust and you need to do a lot of cleaning and the way we are doing it now is we will cast our first layer of epoxy we will wait for it to become tacky so once it's tacky like a sticky toffee then we will come and cast our next layer of epoxy and we believe to today that the bond you get between those two layers or the absolute best bond you're gonna have between your layers of epoxy so that's a huge step i want to share with you guys and it's definitely going to help you getting back to the video as you saw the router slit makes a ton of dust and it's a total mess your shop is super dirty anyway Cutting our table down to its final size. Man, I was such a rookie here. Uh, the machine, the cutoff machine basically cuts straight, but it's super difficult. As you can see, the machine moves up and down. So it was really difficult doing this cut because I only have that small little reach of the table to make sure that we're having a perfectly 90 degree cut. The way we're doing it now is we did invest in the face tool hk85 which helps us cutting our tables perfectly square it obviously comes with a rail which is going to give you the perfect cut moving to the next step and that is by starting to sanding your tables we still use this technique to today but not as much because the belt sander is a very aggressive machine and it removes a lot of material fast especially on the epoxy section of your table so we did invest in the rotex machine which helps us sanding our epoxy tables when we're going to start we're obviously going to start with 80 grit and then we're going to move up all the way to 400 grit and as you can see here i'm using a metabu machine which at that time was nothing wrong with it but we did invest in the finishing sander the ETS-5 and the ETS-EC-3 in helping us getting the perfect finish on all our tables. Still using the same method, it depends on what finish the client wants. So this client obviously wanted a high gloss polished finish, meaning we're going to sand up all the way to 1500 grit. Then we're going to move to the polishing stages. Still using the same method to today, by giving our tables a small 45 degree chamfer right around now way back at the start as you can see here uh, the chamfers we gave our tables was huge it basically takes away the thickness of the table and we stopped giving our tables thick chamfered edges 
we just give it a very very small chamfered edge because we do want to keep the thickness of the slab now it all depends on manufacturer to manufacturer you can literally have any bevel your heart desires and we did invest in the palm router from Festool, which is an absolute blast to work it's a beautiful machine and it gives us the perfect cut every single time moving to the polishing stages and this is where we did improve our current system we are busy building tables now and we did invest in the Festool polishing system i think here we use the merca the merca system but like i said the Festool polishing system is a three-way system you get three different types of polishing stages i think you start i uh, can't remember now i think you start with the orange pad with the orange compound then you move to the blue pad with the blue compound and then lastly you move, move to your finishing compound which is the white one and i do have to say that boy i'm really impressed with the festool polishing system and it's going to give you the perfect finish now this polishing machine was a small little rahobi which irritated me so much because we can only use it for around about 20 minutes then it overheated and we did invest in the shine x from festool i literally polished three to four tables each day well not each day but at the time if i want to and the machine literally do not overheat whatsoever so obviously investing in the correct equipment is going to help you to achieve better finishes i think this table we also did a wet polishing but it's a total mess because once you're going to add a little bit water to the polish it's literally scattering all over the place so you can see on the wooden section of our table man it was so difficult removing all those polishing marks uh, but we stopped using this method although it did work back in the day as you can see we are getting a glass 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 finish um, this system also worked for us but the festival polishing system obviously worked better for us and that's the system we are using currently now so way back at the start when we built epoxy tables we used rubio monocoat as our finishing oil and there's nothing wrong with it but the issue we've got with the rubio system is you can only sand the wooden section of your table to 180 grit and you're sanding the epoxy section to 1500 grit so the problem is the joint between your wood and your epoxy it's so difficult to sand exactly on that line and getting the perfect finish so we moved to odis oil and what makes odis oil so nice is that you can sand and they claim this you can sand the wood to whatever grit your heart desires the oil is designed in such a way that it's still going to penetrate into the wood so let me give you guys a good idea of the technique we use depending on what finish the client wants but we will sand our wooden section on our table to around about 220 grit to 400 grit and then we will sand our epoxy section to 400 grit to get the smoky frost finish but we can let the sander go onto the wooden section once we're going to sand to 400 grit and if we're going to do a high gloss polished finish we can sand our epoxy section to 1500 grit but we can overlap slightly onto the wooden section then we will apply our odis oil to our table this is the absolute best in the oil finish and before i'm going to leave you guys with the final product make sure you help by supporting us hit the subscribe button hit the notification button hit the like button and i'll see you guys next week with another super cool video also remember guys i think we have more than a hundred epoxy videos on our channel it's going to help you to build better tables thanks guys i'll see you next week with another super cool video cheers